There have been many notorious serial killers throughout history. Some of the most famous include Ted Bundy, a notorious serial killer who murdered at least 30 young women and girls in the 1970s. Jeffrey Dahmer, a serial killer who murdered 17 young men and boys between 1978 and 1991. Dahmer was known for dismembering his victims and keeping parts of their bodies as souvenirs. John Wayne Gacy, also known as the Killer Clown. Gacy murdered at least 33 teenage boys and young men in the 1970s. He buried many of his victims in the crawl space beneath his house. Aileen Wernos, a female serial killer who murdered seven men in Florida in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Wernos claimed that her victims had either raped or attempted to rape her. Andrei Chikatilo, a Soviet serial killer who murdered at least 52 people between 1978 and 1990. Chikatilo was known for mutilating his victims and eating their sexual organs. Harold Shipman, a British doctor who is believed to have killed over 200 of his patients with lethal injections of diamorphine. These are just a few examples of the many infamous serial killers who have captured the public's attention. It's important to remember that their crimes were heinous and had a profound impact on their victims and their families. The motivations behind why someone becomes a serial killer are complex and varied, and there is no one-size-fits-all answer. However, there are some common factors that have been observed in many cases. One potential motivation is a deep-seated desire for power and control. Serial killers often target vulnerable victims, and the act of taking someone's life can give them a sense of dominance and authority over another person. Another motivation can be a distorted sense of morality or a desire to rid the world of people they see as undesirable. Some serial killers have claimed to be on a mission to cleanse society of individuals who they deem unworthy or impure. Some serial killers may also have a history of childhood abuse or trauma, which can contribute to feelings of anger, frustration, and a desire for revenge. In some cases, they may see their victims as stand-ins for those who have hurt them in the past. It's also worth noting that many serial killers have been found to have certain psychological or psychiatric disorders, such as antisocial personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, or schizophrenia. These conditions can lead to a lack of empathy, a disregard for societal norms, and a distorted view of reality, all of which can contribute to violent and criminal behavior. It's important to keep in mind that these factors are not necessarily exclusive or exhaustive, and that each case of serial murder is unique. It's also important to note that most people with similar backgrounds or conditions do not become serial killers, and that the overwhelming majority of individuals with mental illness are not violent. The causes of psychological or psychiatric disorders are complex and can be influenced by a wide range of factors, including Genetics Many psychiatric disorders have a genetic component, meaning that they may be more likely to occur in people who have a family history of the disorder. Environmental factors. Environmental factors such as stress, trauma, abuse, neglect, and exposure to toxins can all contribute to the development of psychiatric disorders. Brain chemistry. Chemical imbalances in the brain can contribute to the development of psychiatric disorders, including depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder. Developmental factors. Developmental factors, such as experiencing trauma or stress during childhood, can impact brain development and increase the risk of developing psychiatric disorders later in life. Social factors, social factors, such as poverty, discrimination, and social isolation, can contribute to the development of psychiatric disorders. Substance abuse, substance abuse, including alcohol and drug abuse, can increase the risk of developing psychiatric disorders as well as exacerbating the symptoms of existing disorders. It's important to note that the causes of psychiatric disorders are complex and multifaceted, and often involve a combination of factors. Additionally, not everyone who experiences these risk factors will develop a psychiatric disorder, and some people may develop a disorder without any known risk factors. The exact cause of schizophrenia is also not fully understood. Genetic factors are thought to play a role in the development of schizophrenia, as the disorder tends to run in families. Studies have shown that people with a family history of schizophrenia are more likely to develop the disorder themselves. Environmental factors may also contribute to the development of schizophrenia. Exposure to certain viruses, infections, or toxins during pregnancy or early childhood has been linked to an increased risk of developing the disorder. Trauma, abuse, and chronic stress may also be risk factors. Urological factors are also thought to play a role in schizophrenia. Research has shown that people with schizophrenia have differences in brain structure and function, including changes in the size and activity of certain brain regions. Specifically, changes in the dopamine and glutamate systems in the brain have been linked to the symptoms of schizophrenia. 
It's important to note that schizophrenia is a complex and multifaceted disorder, and that there is no single cause that can explain all cases. It's likely that a combination of genetic, environmental, and neurological factors interact to increase the risk of developing the disorder. Additionally, not everyone with these risk factors will develop schizophrenia, and some people may develop the disorder without any known risk factors. Schizophrenia is a chronic and severe mental disorder that affects how a person thinks, feels, and behaves. It is characterized by a range of symptoms that can be broadly divided into positive symptoms, negative symptoms, and cognitive symptoms. Positive symptoms refer to experiences that are added to a person's reality, such as hallucinations, delusions, and disordered thinking. Hallucinations are perceptions of things that are not present in the external world, such as hearing voices or seeing things that aren't there. Delusions are false beliefs that are not based in reality, such as believing that others are controlling one's thoughts or actions. Disordered thinking can manifest as difficulty organizing thoughts or expressing them coherently. Negative symptoms refer to experiences that are taken away from a person's reality, such as a lack of motivation, social withdrawal, and diminished emotional expression. People with schizophrenia may struggle to maintain relationships or engage in meaningful activities due to these negative symptoms. Cognitive symptoms refer to difficulties with thinking and understanding, such as problems with memory, attention, and decision-making. These symptoms can impact a person's ability to perform daily tasks and communicate effectively. Schizophrenia typically develops in the late teens or early adulthood, and is usually a lifelong condition. While there is no cure for schizophrenia, it can be managed with a combination of medication, therapy, and support. With appropriate treatment, many people with schizophrenia are able to lead fulfilling and productive lives. The impact of a homicide on the family of the victim can be devastating and long-lasting. The family members of the victim often experience a range of emotions, including shock, disbelief, anger, and profound sadness. They may struggle to make sense of what has happened, and may experience a deep sense of loss and trauma. Some specific ways in which killers can affect the families of their victims include Grief and mourning The family members of the victim may experience profound grief and mourning, struggling to come to terms with the loss of their loved one. Trauma and psychological distress The violent and sudden nature of a homicide can cause trauma and psychological distress for the family members of the victim. They may experience symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, including flashbacks, nightmares, and anxiety. Social isolation The family members of the victim may feel socially isolated and cut off from their community, particularly if the homicide was a high-profile case that attracted media attention. Financial difficulties the death of a family member can result in financial difficulties, particularly if the victim was the primary breadwinner or if the family incurred significant expenses as a result of the homicide. Challenges with the criminal justice system The criminal justice system can be complex and difficult to navigate, and family members of homicide victims may experience frustration and disillusionment with the process. Ongoing impact on mental and physical health the impact of a homicide on the family members of the victim can be long-lasting and can have ongoing effects on their mental and physical health. It's important to note that everyone experiences grief and trauma differently, and the impact of a homicide on the family members of the victim can vary depending on individual circumstances. However, it's essential to provide support and resources for these families as they navigate the difficult and painful process of healing and moving forward.